Hey everyone, welcome back to the Money Level Show where we think, act, and prosper. And today we're gonna talk about risk and risk management. So I put this whiteboard video together so that you all can see how this plays out, whether you think that you're taking risk or whether you think that you're not taking risk. So the biggest thing to know is that there is risk in anything. So risk is everywhere. So some people may be like, okay, I'm gonna get on the plane today. That's taking a risk. When you get in the car, and you drive that's taking a risk so you always have a risk in everything that you do and it all depends on how much risk you are taking whenever you do those particular activities and so whether that's investing whether that's going uh, bungee jumping whether that's getting in the car to go to work there's risk in everything and so i want to communicate that because a lot of times people think that you don't take risks whenever you may just like save your money or something like that. Okay, I'm not going to get into investing because I'm not taking risk, and I think that I'd rather just have my money. I don't want to lose money. Now, that is a big misconception amongst a lot of people in the public. I'm sure that you know somebody that has said, nah, I, I don't want to invest my money because it's risky. I don't know much about it. I think I'd rather just save my money. And one of the biggest situations that I'm dealing with is I have a close family member who uh, has you know a lot of money in the bank and they don't want to take any risk but the issue is that they are taking a lot of risk and we're going to get into why they are taking risk by not getting into investing and how much this can lead down the path of more issues later on in the future so uh so we're going to talk about risk so here we got Susie. so Susie. It has $500. So Susie doesn't have a lot of money to invest. And she's like, huh, you know, I only got $500. I think I'd rather put it in a savings account, right? I'd rather save it. So Susie could invest that $500 and multiply it and make it $1,000, right? Or she could invest that $500 and lose $500. So those are some of the risks. Some people may be like, hey, you know, I can make money or I can lose money but I don't want to lose money. So that's one of the biggest things that people don't want to lose. Now, so Susie, she's afraid to lose money and she doesn't feel like the chances of her making money is gonna be very great. So she puts the money in the bank that is paying 0.001% interest. So we know that interest rates have went down a whole lot. I mean, they're pretty much near zero right now. Um, that's the reason why people aren't buying bonds or for the yields, at least. Uh, that's the reason why people aren't keeping money in the bank accounts, because they aren't yielding as much interest as they used to. And so historically, interest rates were tied to monetary. I mean, they're tied to monetary policy. And when we had a lot of inflation in the 70s, interest rates naturally rose. But, you know, whenever the Fed is buying bonds, whenever they're buying the government debt, to finance whatever politicians initiatives and things like that um, what happens is they are reducing the interest rates because they're buying the bonds to suppress the interest rates so that's currently what the federal reserve is doing now when they buy 120 billion worth of bonds so they're buying government debt to finance stimulus packages and things like that because usually government spending is supposed to be funded by taxpayers dollars right so Historically, in the 70s, when we had a lot of inflation, interest rates did rise up a little bit. And we had who was Paul Volcker who came in and said, uh, you know, we need to let interest rates rise. So Jimmy Carter was president at the time. He let Paul Volcker do his thing. And Paul Volcker let the market set the interest rates. Interest rates went up to 20%. So what does this have to do with this today? So back in the 80s, as you can see from this chart, interest rates were super high. So when you put money in the bank, you were earning a lot of interest on the money that you were putting in the bank because you were essentially allowing the bank to use your money to loan out to other people, whether that was a business loan, whether that was a home loan, a car loan and things like that, which is based off fractional reserve lending. And I talked about this in a couple of my other videos. So be sure to check those out. I will link those in the description below. So banks were paying high levels of interest and you could earn 20% a year based off your balance, based off how much you had in the bank. And so banks used to be a safe haven for money because it was like, 
hey, you know, I'm earning a lot of interest on my money. Why do I need to invest when I'm earning 20% in the bank? So now interest rates are near zero. So Susie puts her $500 in the bank and she's earning 0.001%. And that means that she's not earning hardly anything on the money that she puts in the bank. It's just sitting there. And so then you have what's called inflation, right? So you have more money printing, the dollar's losing more and more value, and pretty much since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, the dollar has lost about 95% of its value. So Susie puts that money in the bank. I'm gonna leave this for my great, great, great grandkids, right? It loses 95% of its value. Susie is left with $25 because she cannot buy as much with this $500 as she could in her day her grandkids won't be able to buy as much as she could in her day. So that's pretty much how to work. I think I said that right. Right. So you want to have your money working for you. So Susie thinks that there's no risk by just putting it in the bank, but there's a lot of risk involved. There's a lot of risk because you have inflation. We've seen the cost of gas. We've seen the cost of uh, living. We've seen the cost of health care, daycare, um, you know, all these different things going up in price, food, you know, so We've seen these, these prices increase and the value of our dollars are losing, the value of our dollars are decreasing and we're losing value. So though that is a risk for Susie to think that the bank is a safe place to put her money when she's losing value. Now, Susie would be correct if she had a perspective of like, okay, well, I suspect that the market is going to crash. You know, I, I, I kind of see some signals in that. I see that. Uh, the market is uh, definitely unsustainable on, on the path that it is right now. And I believe that it's going to crash. So I'm going to hold this cash until that crash happens. Then I'm going to get into the market. So that's a different perspective than thinking that you're going to eliminate risk by keeping your money in the bank. So that is a different perspective versus like being fearful of getting into the market versus like being smart about it. Like, hey, this is going to present an opportunity in the future. So I'd rather have cash on hand. Same thing if she owns a mortgage as inflation continues to increase, um, she's going to be paying back her mortgage with cheaper dollars. So, uh, so her wages may go up over the years and then she's paying the same amount on her mortgage. The mortgage is getting cheaper and less of a burden on her. And then she's able to pay that mortgage off with cheaper dollars. So that's another way that you could think about it. We're, we're talking about the person that doesn't think this way. The person that actually thinks that putting their money in the bank is going to eliminate risk. So it obviously doesn't eliminate risk due to inflation and due to not earning enough interest on your on your money. So the key thing is you have to have your money working for you. So you have to give every dollar a job. So sometimes people may say every dollar a job. Oh, make sure you budget and things like that. Yeah, I'm talking about that, but you also I'm also talking about literally giving your dollars a job where they're out earning money for you. So that is very important, especially when you're talking about building wealth and then wanting to be able to retire in the future. So right now, the average American says they need about one point four million to retire. So your money has to work for you. You know, you have to ask yourself, I want to retire someday, but am I near one point four million dollars to retire? You know, so. You have to ask yourself, how are you going to get to 1.4 million? So you have to have your money working for you in some way or another. Right. And so one thing to be careful of, though, is what's called FOMO. So you have FOMO, which is fear of missing out. So a lot of times people may see, oh, cryptocurrencies are going to the moon. Let me jump in at the top of the market and then and then make some money. And then they think it's going to keep going up and then it just end up just falling dramatically and they lose a lot of money. Right. They lose a lot of money. And I say lose in quotations because it depends on how you look at that. So, you know, that person loses a lot of money because they saw that a lot of people were making money. People were becoming millionaires and things like that, turning freaking a thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars. And they got fear of missing out. So they wanted to jump in. They jumped in way too late. Usually when you hear it on CNBC or some of these other sites, it's too late for you to get in. Um, but people wanted to do that. They felt like they could make money. They lose a lot of money. We can, we can talk about people getting in Dogecoin at 72 cents, you know, or whatever it may be. So um, fear of missing out is a key thing to know that that is very dangerous whenever you're in this position because 
a lot of times fear of missing out comes out of desperation, like, oh, I can make more money. I need to get in, you know, and it's not doing your due diligence. It's just following the hype of the crowd. And then once the hype of the crowd dies down, then you end up losing a lot of money. So fear of missing out is something that you want to be careful of. Uh, another way to eliminate risk or to reduce risk is to diversify. So for me, you know, being diversified is very important. However, I started looking at my own portfolio and knowing that uh, I'm he way heavily weighted in commodities. I'm heavily weighted in gold and silver, uh, probably to the degree of 80 percent. So that's something that I have to look at because I'm becoming like a collector and, and like a bullion addict. So that is something that I have to look at being overly weight in gold and things like that and having to diversify my portfolio even more because you want to make sure that when something's going down, you could be making money somewhere else in another sector, whether that's tech, whether that's, you know, uh, commodities or whether that's retail, things like that. So you want to be looking at these different sectors and stuff. And so you want to be diversified. However, my weight in gold is mostly due to the CBDCs, the central bank, their digital currencies and being able to maintain my privacy and being out of the financial system. So that's pretty much what I think without that. So diversity is very important. And then you also you only lose money when you sell. So that's a saying that's going out. Obviously, people lose money when they sell or if they hold on to forever. Now, that's that's kind of like a topic for debate. I mean, I did put money into Mooncoin back in 2017. Mooncoin went to zero and I lost every single dollar that I put in there. And that's why a lot of people have problems with cryptocurrencies is because there's thousands of them and they don't know which one to choose because they don't want some of the uh, cryptocurrencies that are being created to just go to zero and they lose everything. So you only lose what you sell. So one of the biggest things is that whenever the market is going down, you want to take advantage of those dips. So you want to buy down, buy lower when companies that you believe in so that you can uh, reduce the amount of your uh, average cost per share, right? Because the market has a crash about six, every six to 10 years, they have a crash or recession. And then you have a big dip in the market. You can buy way cheaper and then you don't sell and then you just ride it back up. So whenever the market bounces back up, you can make quite a bit of money doing that. And so I hope that was helpful for you guys today. So the biggest thing with managing risk is to diversify, make your money work for you as well. And then also you only lose when you sell. So I hope this was very helpful for you guys today. I hope this was a blessing for you guys. And I want you guys to stay tuned with the Money Level Show as we continue to go forward. And I want to thank you all. All right, peace.